everyone welcome back my name is Zane let's do another Polestar video so Polestar says it could sell more cars than Tesla it's just a matter of time and when so this is really exciting news because I believe this is the news that Polestar fans have been waiting for for months weeks years and the reason that is is because we know Polestar has the potential to sell as much cars as Tesla. It's just that they lack the funding, but they do have the potential, they have the right resources. And I'm pretty sure I'm correct in saying that they have the correct leadership with Thomas Ingoleth as CEO and within the parent companies of Geely and Volvo. And obviously Volvo has been known to build some of the best and safest cars in the world. Now they're all jumping in within the EV space. So we're gonna be having a look at this article to understand their opinion and what's been said and how it can be interpreted and is it being interpreted correctly? And I'll also give you my own opinion on whether Polestar could seriously compete with Tesla. So let's get this thing started. So speaking to media in Sydney, Polestar Global Head of Sale, Mike Withington, said he thinks Polestar could ultimately overtake the EV juggernaut that is Tesla. It's just a matter of time. So this was said by Polestar Global Head of Sale. So it wasn't said by Thomas Ingoleth, which is the CEO. It was said by the sales management. Yes, we could sell more cars than Tesla, but it depends on when. Once we expand our range, there is a real opportunity there, he said, end quote. So Mr. Whittenden explains, while Polestar isn't in the race with Tesla yet, the brand was experiencing a surge in global demand, which had had well on track to achieve its goal of 290,000 vehicles sold by 2025. That's extremely, extremely brilliant. So we also confirmed that the Polestar 3, the large SUV, Polestar 4, the small SUV, and the Polestar 5 GT cars would make their way to Australia in the coming years, with Polestar 3 to be revealed later this year for 2023 arrival down under. So while the Polestar 2 was the more volume-focused entry point to its range, many potential customers with a family focus were waiting on the Polestar 3, which Polestar expects to come with a corresponding boost in sales. Well, of course it will. It's going to boost sales to the roof. I'm expecting Polestar to sell at least 100,000 vehicles next year, in my opinion. I'm also expecting Polestar to achieve a revenue income of possibly around $3 billion this year and possibly around $4.5 or $5 billion next year once they achieve 100,000 vehicles. That's going to be brilliant. But my opinions are based on statistics. I've taken numbers into this, you know, because Polestar made 1.5 billion last year just by selling 29,000 vehicles. So I'm just doing the math. It's easy maths. So Mr. Whittenden relayed Polestar network of factories in China and its ability to use the resource of its partner Geely and Volvo, as well as the upcoming initial public offering IPO, all helped to secure the brand's long-term future and the ability to scale its production. Now in comparison, Tesla feels its popular Model 3 sedan and all soon launched the Model Y SUV with the updated Model S sedan and the Model X SUV. Also set to arrive in Australia with more limited demands than the Tesla Model 3 and Y. So it's likely that the Polestar 3 will be much higher end offering than the Polestar 2 with the brand specifying targeting a similar market segment to the Porsche Cayenne. So that's quite exciting. This isn't the this is not the first time this is not the first time Polestar is targeting Porsche. They're targeting Porsche with their Polestar Model 5, the luxurious sedan that's meant to target the Porsche Taycan electric vehicle. And now they're targeting the Polestar 3 with the Porsche Cayenne. And if I'm not pronouncing the Porsche Cayenne name properly, I do apologize. So Polestar recently sold out of Polestar 2 for the previous model year, with the new customers needing to wait until November for deliveries of updated 2023 models, which has also taken a hike in price due to the strains in supply chain networks. And from new materials to factory lockdown, which the brand said were affecting the whole industry. So surprisingly, unlike its test arrival, Polestar confirmed much of its demand for the two crossover was at the top end. The long range dual motor price from $73,400 before the on-road costs 
but there's also a relatively healthy spread across the variations and variants. In comparison, Tesla made a strong ground with this entry level Model 3 now priced from $64,900. This is obviously in um, Australian dollars, I assume. So the local brand managing director explains the brand customers were seeking the longer range availability on the top two variants, but expressed that the brand was focusing on explaining the benefits of the top spec cars all wheel drive performance and the enhancement in optical package can bring despite hiking price and a long waiting time posta said the demand in australia was well above what they have expected so far sales are definitely where they want them to be demands have been a lot higher than anticipated and they're seeing a real shift in mentality a boost in ev demands those wait lists are starting to grow said mr johnson explaining customers are not just okay with the hike in price but also the long wait time mr Wittenden said that the brand's position as a sustainable leader was resonating with customers so it's funny we're seeing demand driven by many buyers kids and their aspiration to have a more sustainable products he said this mindset is growing all the time mr johnson added our buyers want to be environmental this idea of i'm buying something now which is going to be out there for years I wanted to be the future and I wanted to be sustainable while the interest apparently high Polestar is a long way to topple Tesla locally with the Model 3 moving 4,469 units so far in 2022. According to VFAX data, over the same period of time Polestar has registered just 208 new Polestar 2 models. So the updated Polestar 2 arrives in November this year, while the Polestar 3 SUV is expected to be revealed before the end of the year. So that's fantastic and it will start production next year in the United States. So this was just a quick simplistic article, not much information on how Polestar hopes to achieve that margin of catching up to Polestar. Not much information on how Polestar intends to catch up to Tesla because Tesla has six factories now. I believe they have at least, what is it, three or four factories in, in the United States. One factory in Germany, one factory in, uh, in Shanghai, the big new factory in Texas, one in New York, I believe, one in California, and I do believe one is in, I cannot even remember the name, but they've got a lot of factories. So six factories, big factories, not small in size. So Postar does have a long way to go, but they, but they are a serious competitor. You need to notice that. But no concrete information on how they hope to achieve this goal. We just got to see how the SPAC merger go. We got to see Postar delivery numbers these days. We got to see the Postar 3 and what they can do next year with delivery numbers. And we have to see just how good the Postar 3 is. Will there be recalls? Like how Rivian is already having to recall over 400 of their vehicles. We don't want that with Postar. We really don't. We can't afford that delay right now. We can't afford that backlash right now. We just can't. So I do believe that Postar is in a great position to deliver safe vehicles without having massive recalls. So thank you for watching. Subscribe. And of course, I will see you in my next video.